How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, time to get that imagination all revved up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Paul Lair. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. He is a wonderful artist. I really love his style. Uh, he did uh, a lot of covers for science fiction uh, novels and paperbacks for quite some time, and he's got such a vivid imagination and such a wonderful color palette and painting style. Uh, just really a phenomenal artist. So let's take a look at some of his pieces. Um, this one is one of the ones that, that originally caught my eye uh, when I was looking through his stuff recently. I just really loved the uh, simplicity of the background. You have this whole open sky that has nothing in it for quite some time, and then you have the the sun or a star. Unfortunately, I haven't read this science fiction book, but I'd imagine it's a some form of uh, anyways. It's a long story. Uh, rising, but it doesn't even rise till below, even probably just slightly below the middle of the piece. And I thought that was a really interesting choice um, to lay it down low there as it starts to rise, but still to include that in the composition was an interesting choice. And then these great um, figures where you have the uh, light source coming from behind, so it keeps them dark in the front, which is really an interesting compositional uh, choice, so it makes the figures a little more mysterious. And uh, then you've got these ones that have tails and just really invites the viewer to start um, getting their imagination uh, going, but it gives them enough information to bring them in and then to get that started. Uh, again, just some more gorgeous stuff from movie posters. This one I really liked. It reminds me of those, um, I want to say they're uh, near Thailand, but there's some great cliffs that look kind of similar to this, but then he adds that sci-fi element of having uh, like a population or a city, a futuristic city built into those um, cliffs that are just wonderful. And I really like his color choices. I suck at color. He's wonderful at it. I'm always fascinated by color. Um, just gorgeous stuff. And he's got a, such a vivid imagination. Um, there's a great little, uh, I don't know if the documentary is out or not, but you can, uh, if you just go on YouTube and you type in Paul Lair, there's a really uh, fun little documentary, at least the intro to it that, that's up on YouTube that you can check out. And he did these crazy wooden sculptures too that are just phenomenal. He's got such um, an imaginative and creative mind. I love this guy too because I'm just a big fan of any sort of creature stuff and I thought this giant crab um, that's battling all these little guys that would be such a fun shot to animate. Uh, yeah, Just a great idea. But I did want to share a quote that uh, comes from that same uh, documentary that I was just talking about and he said, for myself it would be foolish to pursue content of that kind in my work. And he was talking about um, how he liked being in nature and how a lot of the world is uh and this was i want to say probably back in the 80s or 90s when this was uh, filmed uh, but a lot of the world is turning city and turning uh, so that you know people aren't out in nature so much and he was talking about the things that inspire him and to do things that would be more modern or more uh, city-based just would not be the kind of work that fulfilled him and he you know even towards the end of his life he even got like I said more into nature he would get um, trees that were pulled down and then make sculptures out of the trees and it's just really interesting and you can really tell that um, uh, there's a, another part of this documentary too um, where he he was a painter obviously and I think he's a phenomenal painter but um, a lot of the people that would, would talk about him would say that what he was really into was doing these sculptures and uh, I think that's that's true. You know, a, a lot of the stuff that I do here um, with you guys each and every day is animation stuff. And I love animation. I do. And it's really fun. Um, but, you know, that I have this, this drive to get better and better and better as an illustrator. And um, I think any sort of creative uh, person usually has a couple uh, things that they, they love and they're passionate about. And it's about kind of picking which one uh, to really uh, throw yourself into. Um, but let's go ahead and get into some animation before I ramble on for too long. We are continuing on with our lip sync shot. We're using the Malcolm V2 rig from Anim School, and we're using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. For more information on that and all the stuff we've talked about so far, check out the links in the description below. And uh, just kind of as a side note, little caveat, it is a little bit earlier than I usually record, so I know probably my voice is a little scratchy, so apologies about that. 
do have a giant uh, mug of coffee here so hopefully that will get us through and keep uh, my voice going well so thanks for sticking with me as always the main goal of doing these videos each and every day is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you to go on and take another step in your journey towards mastering whatever medium it is that you're passionate about and to just keep going and keep pushing yourself and having fun along the way and, and so you feel like uh, you're not alone in your art day each and every day I upload one of these a new one every day uh, just to, to be in the trenches there with you and give you a little dose of encouragement and a little pat on the back and say keep going so let's go ahead and get into it so what I was thinking um, for today just I either want to do one of two things either want to start um, doing like a Muppet mouth kind of a pass on the lip sync or break down um, some of the movement a little bit more so I think what we'll do is we'll look at the ending and we'll try and spruce that up a little bit more so as you can see I did um, go through and uh, changed a couple of the colors and everything on some stuff here um, that was a little bit after I turned off the recording so apologies about that I know I normally uh, do everything on cam but I wanted to make a more interesting thumbnail and I'd already turned it off so there you go and let's tweak this background here start off where is it there set that you can see there's just a little bit of um, movement and I just move the background a little bit here so I'll make sure that stays put okay yeah let's so let's move uh, this part here let's look at these shoulders here and let me turn my audio track on real quick okay so right here we're gonna go ahead and raise them up one too many um, let's just kind of cut our frame range from really 98 here to 157 and we'll do a little play blast and see kind of how our timing's looking for this stuff here so one I think it still needs to be tweaked a little bit and probably all of it moved forward a couple of frames on the shoulders. Just trying to get a rough timing for where we want to have that ah ha 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 is what the beats are there. So let's go ahead and turn our sound off right now. We still just kind of build this in. So. frames sooner and set that and set 150 by 4 we got 152 so we just kind of have that slow into that last pose there Sort of taper these off a little bit more too, just 
just so it gets a little bit less and less as it goes here. and see if that's a little bit better. Just trying to set up kind of the timing. All right, it's okay. It's probably a little too much. So we'll tone it down a little bit more and taper it off a little bit more towards the end. And again, we'll go in and just uh, turn off our sound here. So it's a little too much. So let's just bring these guys down a little bit more. Bring that down down just so we get a little more kind of tapering off so it goes less and less and less here and then we'll go one frame here just so our timing's a little bit better there too so again let's um, delete any key that we don't need here so we'll go ahead and delete that one that's fine that one we'll delete this guy Then once we've got this timing working, then we can uh, use this to set up our timing on the chest and everything too. okay place to start here now let's look at the uh, actual chest all right so let's turn our sound off for right now and let's just look here and we'll try and build our same timing so um, let's see what keys do we have Seventeen three key and one twenty four and one twenty eight and one thirty four and one thirty nine. In this case, I'm just opening a second document just so that I can punch in the main timing that I like here on my second uh, computer over here. So 152 and then the last one, 157. Okay, just gives me a rough thing so I can go with for where I want my timing to be here. And then let's look at translate wise. So I want one at I said 117. it there 124 we'll go down 128 we'll go up uh, 134 we'll go down 145 or 139 we'll go up 145 we'll go down and 152 we'll go up and then go down okay now again, we still want this to pretty much just be sinking lower, but to have a little bit of movement through it here. So let's look here. And we just want a little bit of this. It doesn't have to be anything super amazing here. It's probably too much, but we'll we'll see here. That's probably going to be. Let's just leave it like that for right now. Now this feels. 
feels like it's gonna be a little too much, so. However, we're gonna continue to want it to gradually go down here. So something kinda like that. All right, let's do a playlist and just uh, see how it works. I'm not gonna worry about uh, the audio track being in here right now. Okay, it's all right. I definitely want to do some um, rotation in X on the chest so we get a little bit of compression and everything there. I feel like the shoulders are probably a little too exaggerated, but I'll leave them for right now. So next thing we want to do is get the rotate X here. And go in between here. forward and go back and go forward and go back and here and go forward okay and let's look at our rotate X's there and we're gonna do the same thing where we kind of taper these off a little bit more here and then we'll offset it with what we do with the chest here in a moment as well but again, just kind of taper it off there. And let's look at, which one was it? Rotate that one, this one, this one, this one. And we'll just look at the rotate X's here so we do them on the same timing. set a key, key selected, and go to this one, and key selected, go to that one, key selected, this guy here, key selected, this guy there, key selected, and then this is um, kind of like an acting keep alive, I guess, because it's not a huge movement, but it's a uh, a little bit of movement in there that uh, keeps the character alive through kind of a, a moving hold but also has a little bit of an acting beat on top of there so uh, now let's delete any extraneous frames that are in there from before so we get rid of that that and then I think we're there and now let's just go back to uh, looking at the chest here and let's figure out which way we need to go here So that's forward, we want this to go back a little bit to try and keep them kind of in the same universal space here. And then when that's forward there, we're going to want to go up a little bit just so it occupies pretty much the same universal space there. Let's just do a play blast. All right, definitely need some pulling back there. It's a little too uh, hip thrusty, really. Um, so let's just start with the hip and we'll minimize that a lot more. It's just too over the top, so we'll just scale everything back. That's fine. We know that it works, it's just uh, getting it to work a little better. gonna minimize all of that a little bit more. And then we'll look at the chest here. And look at the rotate X's there. So we just want to kind of keep the arms in the same universal space here. So something like that's going to be way too much. Still need to tweak the 
this a little bit more. Let's see, let's see. Still be too much rotate X and the hips too. at this negative space here to give us a blueprint of where we're at. Uh, let's just do another play look. Alright, it's getting there. Um, we still need to probably reevaluate how the shoulders work a little bit more. They seem to be kind of doing more of a for, uh, swing than an up and down. So let's take a look at those again. Let's see if it's more the shoulder. Z instead of rotate Y here, or find some sort of combination of the two of them instead. Tone down that uh, rotate Y then quite a bit. And just do mostly rotate Z. Let's see if that will work a little better for us, which I think it will. So I think I'll still keep a little bit of rotate Y in there, but mostly focus on the rotate Z's here. And then again, we want to kind of taper those off a little bit more. See how that works here. All right, I think we need, just need to get in here and just do a little bit on the arm here. So a little set one there. And then we'll set it here. Just counter animating what we have there. 
let's try it with that. Let's see how that works here. Alright, it's getting there. It still needs some definite work there. But we'll get there. This is where I should move forward here a little bit. circular motion in there. Okay, I think that's about alright, it's still a little too over the top, but it's starting to get there. Let's clean that up a little more. back here should probably film another one here if it's up further Let's look at this arm. And let's grab both of them here. And we'll do our do kind of a rough timing from this one and then we'll offset it a couple of frames. And let's do that. Make sure I'm doing it on the right key here. Let's do that one and that one. Rotate X's and delete any keys that are not where they're supposed to be. So we got this one. So that one will delete. That one will delete. That one will delete. Alright, now I got a rough timing based 
left in there. So we'll delete that because we don't need that key. This one's fine. This one we don't need. Just trying to keep stuff clean so there's not extra keys where we don't need them. And again, we'll probably delay the timing a couple frames on here as well. up, swings through, and we should have a key about right here. That's a little bit forward there. So it goes all the way two frames later for this. probably too big of a move but we can always uh, pull it back here so let's all right it's not perfectly polished up yet but I think it's starting to get there uh, we need to do some on the hand as well okay so let's do that here for some reason see like right there there's a Separation where we get this one in here. Let's just go ahead and hide that real quick. Don't need any extra controllers showing through for some reason. Okay. Um, so let's get this hand controller and this elbow. And 
let's get some rough timing built in there. Rotate X. And rotate X here. And which one was it? Was it this key? Here. And we'll delay this from the uh, elbow a little bit more as well as we get there. the rotate X's for now so we can get rid of anything we don't need here so we got that one let's throw one here delete that throw one there there so we'll delete that one This one. Looks like that. Okay. And I'm sure there's some tweaking we're going to have to do with that. And it's the uh, Y and Z. to hit a little bit sooner here. So let's key Y and Z. Key those at level 18 here. We still have a little bit of movement through there. and bring that to level, let's say, 124 here. So we just have a little bit of movement through there. It's mostly the rotate X. Okay, great. Okay, and let's get back in here and look at our rotate X. So at this point, we could probably start Dragging that a little bit there. And here, we'd want it to come up a little bit. Let's do a quick play blast. I'm sure it's overdone, but uh, all right. Actually, it feels okay for right now. I think it's an okay place to start from and still do some polishing passes and everything on there as we go. Um, but I feel like that movement kind of works to get that little bit of uh, movement from the shoulder extending out through the arm and a little bit in the chest as well. One thing I might try to. Looking at the base portion of the chest, is there a translate Y on here? There is. Cool. No, I don't want to do that. I do want to do. Wait, is there one on here? What about a belly controller? There we go. We could do something there. I was hoping there's just like a pure 
whatever value from drive. There we go. That's what I'm looking for here. So what we can do there is lift that up. We'll go down. Lift that up. We'll go down. Lift that up. Go down. See how that works. Again, I don't want it to be exactly at the same time as everything else. It's probably a little bit delayed here. to accentuate that a little bit more. Let's have it go. Scale it up a little bit. Down. Up a little bit. Down. Up a little bit. Down. Up a little bit. And down. Okay, let's look at the scale there. Back here, just one. Okay. Bring that back down. We don't need a lot of that, but I think it might just loosen up that area a little bit more. Okay. And let's do a clay glass that I'm looking for there. Alright. Um, do I want to? Push it any more. I feel like I want to play with the timing of it a little bit more, so maybe it would lead and follow. So the chest would lead and the belly would follow. So we push the chest moves about two frames forward. So let's see. So the extreme ups would all be about two frames sooner. would be where they are. Okay, let's watch that, see if we like that a little bit better, just playing mm, maybe one frame less. It feels a little off, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, so we still, instead of doing it two frames before, we'll just do it one frame before, so we'll push it one frame back there. I think that'll work. Now let's go ahead and go back to looking at uh, the other side. I don't think we've done hardly anything here. We've got to start back kind of at the beginning there where we were doing rotate Z instead of Y, or more exaggerated instead of Y. Z's there. And again, we want to kind of taper that off a little bit more. And we don't want this arm necessarily to be so over the top. This one can be a little more mellow uh, compared to the other arm because the other arm's got that uh, heavy tablet in there. So we'll go ahead and exaggerate that one a little bit more. And we'll bring back our rotate Y's. We don't need those to be so much here. And we can use the kind of the timing on the other arm to help us give a good starting place for how we want to approach this one. Okay. Now let's look at that and that. And we 
adjust at our rotate axes here. Now we've got the timing worked out on the other arm. So we'll use that same basic timing <coughs> blueprint here to give us our right place. So Q X there, there. why I usually like to get, uh, especially if you're doing two things that are kind of similar, get one really nailed in and then you can kind of um, use that same template on the other one and then just do a couple of little tweaks for the spacing and the timing just a little bit and then you've got uh, something that works a little better rather than trying to do both of them at the same time. Um, it's kind of the same way with modeling. Whenever you're modeling a character, you usually model one side and then just duplicate that side and add your variations there too. Okay, so we've got something to work with there. So again, let's look just at our rotate X's for now. It's a little over exaggerated though. And this one probably should still be going back here. Yeah, we'll make the taper this off a little better. It's a little too much movement. still be the movement from the shoulder though that's given us this place. an extra key here that we don't need, so let's go ahead and delete that one. Okay, and let's start on the elbow. Let's just look at the rotate X's. So I'll key that. that, and that, and 
this one. So a rough timing for where we want to put our keys in. I'm going to delete that and drop them down. And we'll go ahead and drag that one back still a little bit more. And so I can move forward a bit more. Can just look at the uh, rotate X's here compared to the other side. just gives us kind of a rough timing for where we want to go with this. something like that. Kind of tweaked up the timing compared to the other hand a little bit more, but we'll see if we like it or not. I don't want them to be totally at the same time and hips the same way. Let's do a play blast and just see it. Alright, it's a little too over the top, so we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. So let's look at this uh, elbow here. And we'll just bring it down a little bit more. start the arm, do a little bit less there too. Again, not a lot, but it's feeling a little too over the top throughout, so just kind of taper it back a little bit more. And then look at the wrist as well. Do another play 
fast and just see how that, that feels a little bit. All right, it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Um, we can still do a couple polishing passes and everything on there, but I think the uh, main movement's there a little bit more. Uh, let's try and do a little more up and down. I feel like we need to exaggerate that a little bit more. So let's try and push that a little bit more just on the hips here. Raise that up. And maybe we could actually, let's see, where's the hip? Let's look at the translate lines on both of those. We could maybe delay that a couple of frames here. Keep that and keep that one and 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 this one. Okay. And now let's go here. Look at those translate lines. Set those a little bit. So we might go a little up. And a little down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Back there. Okay. Just so we can have a little more. Do a little bit of play blast and just kind of look there. All right, I think that's a little better. We might add a little bit of scale in there too, just to accentuate the butt a little bit more there. So let's try and do that too. So on this one, we can scale it in a little bit. Just so we can have that belly move work a little bit better for us here. Because it'll have the uh, chest, the belly, and then the butt. So you get that movement throughout that chest a little bit better. A little ripple. And let's play that and see if we like it. If not, we'll get rid of it, but I think it'll work. Okay, it might be a little too exaggerated in the butt. Uh, so we'll probably scale that back a little bit, just a little bit more. And then probably play up the up and down on the actual hip a little bit more too, so we don't lose that. Just a little bit more. All right, and let's do one more play blast and I think we'll we can still use with some polish and everything there, but I think it's uh, getting there a little bit better. So let's take a look back at where we started. We made it through, got some coffee, and uh, we started off looking at uh, the beautiful work of Paul. Larry said, for myself, it would be foolish to pursue content of that kind in my work. I think you got to know what stuff you're really going to throw yourself behind. And if it's not something you really love, it's not going to turn out as good as the things that you really love because you're going to spend that extra time, that extra passion, that extra care into making it wonderful if it's something that you really like. And that doesn't mean that you don't take on client work or don't do some freelance work here or there or don't work for a studio and learn something and everything. But when it comes down to um, the stuff that you really want to be known for or that you really want to do, if it's your passion, you know, don't squander the time and the energy and the effort into things that aren't truly 
adhering to the, the stuff you believe in and the stuff that you love. So thanks for hanging out with me. I love you guys lots. I hope you had fun doing this. Um, sorry that the audio and the video is a little bit off. It seems like just because we're doing a lip sync shot, uh, for some reason XSplit does does that with the audio files built in there. Um, but uh, you guys are amazing. I hope you carved out some time in your day towards uh, taking another step um, in mastering whatever medium it is that you're passionate about. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I urge you guys to do so, even if you never watch another video again, but at least you'll remember this moment that we got to spend together and uh, share together, and I really appreciate you watching. And, uh, you know, if you subscribe to the channel too, you'll see a new video each and every day, and hopefully if you look through your subscription feed and you see another video that I did for another day, it'll remind you to take another step in your own journey and to never give up, and don't let a day slip by that you don't at least spend a few minutes working on your own dreams. And uh, feel free, as always, to throw down uh, links for the stuff that you guys are creating. I'm happy to give you some thumbs up or a uh, word of encouragement or motivation or if you need an extra set of eyes or any of that kind of stuff. Because um, we're all on this journey together, uh, working towards um, mastery of our passions. And uh, I'm getting rambly, so we'll wrap it up for today. And we will see you for some more animation, some more imagination, some more creation, and some more just fun and steps in our journey together.